nice. And he said, sure, come over to my house. I This is where I live. I'll take a look. Um, it sounds, so like, I, it sounds like a porno movie. Right? The <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I, I can repair your drone. I'll be right. right over. It had every opportunity to get really dicey. Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. It's Love Fest time. It sure is. We have two favorites on today. There have been, has been no couple as requested as these two. Really? Wow. Yes. I'm not kidding. I've gotten multiple DMs, emails. You guys are very popular. Thank you for joining us, Leslie and Alex. <laughs> Thanks so much for having us. Yeah. Wow. We come highly requested. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How do you yeah, feel about you. that? Is that oh, I feel pretty, good? pretty good. I'm sure it has... I guess a lot to do with all of our news that we've just like thrown out in the past week where we postponed a wedding, we're moving cross country, we're having a baby. So we're happy to share anything and everything with you guys. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You guys like to do things all at once. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. I'm very impressed. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. It's 2020 just continues to throw curveballs, but... You know, there are some silver linings to the year. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm actually that. kind of jealous because I feel like you guys are so you. I just feel like you. You're very go with the flow and you make things happen. And we're not really like that. I feel like we're more like cautious. And as we learned recently, when we learned our enneagrams, we're like past oriented. And I feel like you guys are future oriented. Just that's the vibe I'm getting. <laughs> Yeah, I think we like to, we definitely are pretty good at living in the moment. Yeah. I'll say that much. I think 2020 at the start of the year, uh, I think we all had high expectations for the year. And um, yeah, I was, once the news dropped of the pandemic, I was kind of like doom and gloom. I'm like, geez, this, it's not good. This is going to be crazy. But I think we've just gone and rolled with the punches and made made it our year anyway. So yeah. Wouldn't drone footage be in demand during a pandemic? You just want to be I, far away from what you're I filming? mean, like, you know, we were in LA and Hollywood just got completely shut down. Every major production just stopped until they figured out all the, you know, the, the safety procedures and everything. But I actually got out when the pandemic was on to see LA completely empty, like Venice Beach, the skate park filled in with sand. I'm like, this is once in a lifetime opportunity mm -hmm. to get footage. So I actually actively went out and flew the drone in various places of LA um, with my expensive drone and basically documented the entire city in under quarantine. Oh, um, cool. So I have all this iconic footage, which it's not gonna be like that ever again. You know, seeing Venice boardwalk, completely empty with yeah. yellow tape and yeah wow. so i, I kind of took the took it the, as an opportunity to get out there yeah and uh leslie started planning domestic trips yeah i just feel like i we couldn't just wait around and let this virus take control of us because it was beginning to and you know we just made we just took back control i think with having a baby and um not letting it just uh, postpone our lives, really. Yeah, I, I feel like we Do, could we should take a page out of their yeah. book <laughs> on multiple <laughs> levels. On multiple levels. So before we get into it, I, I you deserve congratulations on all fronts. Congratulations on being pregnant. Congratulations you. on your engagement and all the things. And thank you for spending what would have been your wedding day with us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's something to be said about that, though. Like we're we're happy that um, we can come on here and talk about. Um, our relationship and celebrate our love with you guys in some way on our wedding day, since it won't be walking down the aisle. Yeah, <laughs> this is better than this is going to be better. I mean, this is yeah. this is yeah, a real Andy, big yes, day. Yeah. Yes, yeah. This really is the is. most I mean, important. Was... This is the most important day of your life, right here. <laughs> exactly. This is it right here. No, Alex literally had ten, ten, twenty. This date engraved in. The engagement ring, which yeah, it was a little ambitious, but <laughs> I mean, it, I you know, I asked her parents. I feel for, great about that. <laughs> I asked her parents for permission um, in December or was it New Year's Eve? I don't know. We came here for Christmas, and I was like very nervous. Obviously, I'm like, I'll just wait till the New Year or something. <laughs> Push it back. <laughs> and then I, you know, I obviously asked her, her dad for permission, and then um, you know they're so excited and said yes and all of that, and then I was like. Hey, let's let's like let's get the date sorted because 
I know Liz is going to be keen. And I asked her mum, you know, what dates would work. And she said, you know, with the number 10, 10, 20 would be a great date. So I'm like, all right, let's do it. So I had it engraved in the ring. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, talk Look, about ballsy. Talk about ballsy. I mean, ballsy. you are in your parents' bedroom doing a podcast. So there is meaning to that engraving. It's, I guess it's come full circle. Yeah. I don't know. My, no. Yeah, my mom likes to take control sometimes. But yeah. uh, I mean, I've always envisioned an October wedding and I've always liked even numbers. And so when I saw it on the ring, I was a little taken aback, but yeah. all for it didn't work out anyway it wasn't our date and that's okay yeah we oh, just had it had it polished out <laughs> yeah we deleted it oh, yeah. we just deleted it from the ring altogether <laughs> you just photoshopped it's that like a out. bad tattoo <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> okay so we're gonna go back to the beginning with the two of you and before we begin i want to give you full permission to be as specific and long-winded as you as your heart desires mm-hmm. okay because we, the whole point of this podcast, especially when with our Love Fest guests, is to really give people the details and not rely on, you know, the amazings and awesomes of the world, which I think, especially if we think, Leslie, you and I, where we came from or how people originally got to know us, those are popular adjectives to describe Absolutely. the person you <laughs> want to end up with. And I think awesome and amazing don't really cut it. <laughs> So uh, we're going to go back to the very beginning. And I know you get asked this all the time. And Leslie, I know you talked about this on your blog. And certainly you guys are very good about sharing your relationship with the public. But and always in excellent taste, might I add. Oh, my God. It's so feel good. And it's never too much. And it always leaves you wanting more. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And best of all, I feel like it's an album you'll look back on and just love. But how did you two meet for anyone who doesn't know? Okay, how, how we met. Let's see. I slid in to Alex's DMs. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that's because I needed my drone fixed. This was 2018, summer of 2018. And I had a broken drone that has interesting, interesting, <clears throat> interestingly enough, gone back three different boyfriends. So that's important to note um, because it started... I bought this drone like back in 2015 and it's an important piece of the puzzle because I bought it with one boyfriend and then another boyfriend flew it into an Aruban palm tree. So it was broken. <laughs> it's, mm. it's like, if this hadn't happened, we never would have met. And yeah. so anyway, I'm left with a broken drone, right? And desperately need to get it fixed for a shoot the next day. I'm talking to a friend. I need him to troubleshoot it. And he's like, listen, I'm in Atlanta and I can't help you. If you're in LA, you should message this guy named Alex. And so I looked him up on Instagram, slid into his DMs, desperately needing help. And he was so nice. And he said, sure, come over to my house. I, this is where I live. I'll take a look. Um, Sounds like, it sounds like a porno movie. (laughs) It's it's like, oh, I I can repair your drone. I'll be Right. right over. It had every opportunity to get really dicey, uh, but it was actually, it was a huge feat because we, we ended up only living five minutes away from each other. And mm-hmm. if you know, LA, that's, that's huge. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. So I ended up going over to his house. Um, and before I remember he had the door open and I'll never forget because I saw him before I even walked past the threshold. And I was like, man, this guy is hot. I should have done more research. And so it's already, it's already going well. <laughs> and I get into his house. He's making homemade pesto. I'll never forget that oh, either. My Lord. Saw me coming. Like strong, he, strong he knew game. exactly what he was doing. <laughs> anyway, he couldn't fix the drone, but he ended up giving me one of his for the shoot yeah. the next day, which was really sweet. Yeah. We ended up doing a little drone lesson in the front yard, just showing her how this one worked and did a little test fly and all of that. So that is such modern day chivalry. Right? It's like, I'll lend you my drone. Can you imagine like a hundred <laughs> years ago hearing this story? Yeah, I know. It's amazing. It seemed very futuristic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm more the technical, like the, so- if the software or something like that. But this one was like a hardware and it's one of those things you just got to send it back in. It's like, a yeah. you know, but that's okay because he gave me his and in hopes to see me again when I returned it, when I returned it. Yeah. And, um, and then he ended up buying me one <laughs> with his credits that you had. And that was our yeah. first date was going to fly my brand new drone. And then really the rest was history. I remember that dinner 
after we did that flying lesson and we forgot it was one of those dinners where you forget to order because you just continue continuously talk yeah, about we, yeah, topic we, after topic we had, we had tacos at jane's beach which is in that movie and it was yeah it was really just we were talking for about an hour and a half before we even got to eating i think we had a drink and it's like whoa it's 8 30 <laughs> it was yeah it was really nice and fluid and just easy mm. Oh, I love it when that That's happens. That's how it goes. Basically, you want an angry uh, waitress or waiter. <laughs> it's like, oh, we haven't looked at the menu yet. <laughs> oh, <We're> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah Take exactly. forever to order. Oh, that's so. That's a that's very great. nice story. I'm curious to get Alex's perspective on that. When you first saw Leslie, like, what had you done your research? I Was mean, the pesto strategic? Well, <laughs> look, you know, like she had some followers, but I have like on my business account, I have quite a, a large audience there. And then when you see the little blue tick come into the DMs, you're like, I'm like, okay, what do they want? They want something. You know what I mean? Because, <laughs> you know, they're like, hey, can I have a free drone to my other account? So this blue tick comes to my personal account. And then she said my, my friend's name. So I was like, but, you know, I went and checked out. I'm like, okay. And then sort of saw down. I'm like, oh, she was on that show. And I never really got into that show. So I, did, I didn't really know about it, the whole bachelor nation and all that craziness of like just the show itself so i'm just kind of like don't don't care like fame all that crap i just don't mm -hmm. really care about it so yeah she obviously i knew she was attractive but i was just like i was sort of recently out of a long-term relationship and i was just like i do not give a shit about like seeing anyone i'm not interested in dating like i was just i was fine i'd finally found my sort of inner happiness and I was just work was just booming I was flying all over the country and I was just happy which I think was why I was wasn't expecting anything I just had zero expectations and when she walked through the door she was lovely and then I was like she's like oh I gotta go to rhubarb for my yoga training and I'm going here for three weeks and I'm like okay <laughs> cool like <laughs> I'll see you in a few weeks maybe if you want to catch up or we started texting and it was it was a very um yeah, it was just a very slow, organic process um, after we met. It wasn't like we just met and we started dating. Like we had our first date, then she went away and it just ended up sort of blo like blossoming from there. So it was just a really, for me, it was just beautiful and natural and organic and she was just such a lovely person. Um, it was just easy. Yeah. That's really nice. It's the way it should be. It, yeah, I mean. Easy. Yeah, we always talk about that, the effortlessness of it and how, you know, life will throw enough hurdles at you. Hopefully <clears throat> the one solid thing you have is when you come home to someone that that part is easy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I like your word effortless. It feels that way most of the time. I don't want to like blanket the whole relationship that everything is easy and paint that rosy picture. But I mean, for the most part, it's truly yeah. effortless. Yeah. 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 This yeah. wasn't on my list of questions, That's but great. Alex, your your perspective on that meeting is making me wonder, do you think, therefore, based on how it worked for you guys, that it can happen best when you least expect it, when you're not actively looking necessarily? A hundred percent. Yeah. I feel like nowadays with the whole Tinder and just the, in, <laughs> the instantness of it all, it's, it's on, and the, you know, the dating apps or the dating websites, I guess, I don't know about those, but they've been around for a while and they're great for like for certain people's love stories. Um, but I think it's really something to be said when you meet, you know, you did message me through Instagram. <laughs> you so, can't escape. You can't so, escape. <laughs> so, but it's, it's at some point you connect through some way, whether it's out in public or, you know, traditionally or now a lot of it is online. Um, so, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, okay. I think I think that's a good point, though, because I was also in that place in life where I had recently gotten out of a short term relationship um, that was public and had healed from that and found this stride and creativity had just moved to LA was really feeling good within myself as well. And I think you have to be at peace within yourself so that hmm. and not really be looking maybe to then come across somebody that you can yeah. find love with. Yeah. I really think the best thing for people is really travel. It's just get outside your comfort zone and it's mm -hmm. hard now, but, you know, traditionally just go out and 
do it, do what you love. And I think eventually you'll sort of stumble upon someone who's out there that's like-minded and have that, find that connection. You hope so anyway, you know. It's I, so I, true. It is so it's true. It's so true. We talk saying? about that all the time. And when we talk about how we met, it's the same thing. The Even same though we didn't, thing, yeah. it was not, you know, there was no a Reuben tree <laughs> involved or a drone or anything <laughs> like that, but nor any Instagram DMs, but it, a similar sort of just, it was so unlikely you know, you needed that drone to break. And, you know, there was just so but many. it was also th- in the real world. It was a real, it was in the real face-to-face world. unexpected meeting, which I think are the best. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this goes back a million years. Like, this is just a new thing that people are just shopping online. Yeah. And then yeah. saying like, oh, this is the person. This is the one. Yeah. I'm going to go meet them now. And then it's always a disappointment. Or if it isn't, maybe they create the image of that person online before they even really get to know the Expectations. expectations. Yeah, I agree. And there's always, I think, like you said, like they can work out and make for beautiful love stories. But I think the downfall of the apps and the websites is that that swipe, I mean, there's always somebody else around the corner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The grass um, is always greener. Yeah. It, it, or it, yeah. you could and perceive so, it to be Well, greener. it gamifies dating. So it creates that like, you know, like just yes. like you're always waiting for the next text. You're always waiting for the next, you know, post yeah. or like on your Instagram. It's just like, you're like, I can do better than this. And even if I can't do better, I want to feel that excitement of that next swipe. It's sick. Yes, mm. I know. So yeah. I'm, go- I'm going all out of order here, but I we keep like sort of bringing up things that I want to then ask. So, and this is a frequent question that I get, based on how you guys met then, and you know just how unlikely it was. Do you believe in the one or fate or that you two were meant to find each other? And be honest. <laughs> no, that's a that's a good question. I I do. I believe that we fit so well for each other. I mean, there's nobody else I could ever dream about that is more perfect than you. I think that is there just one person for everybody out there? No, I don't, I don't believe that. Um, I think I am so hopeful that he is my one and only, but I think, um, I think it's, it's so much about love is, is about timing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think about, <laughs> it's so true, but I think really about, is. you know, I think about other people I've known in my lifetime where they've had multiple loves due to, you know, uh, different circumstances, um, divorce, death, whatever it may be. And they have just been, able to have multiple loves in their lifetime. And so I believe there are a few perfect people out there Mm -hmm. that you can really resonate with and, and get on the same page with and live with um, forever. But I'm very hopeful that this is my one and only. (laughs) So so Alex, do you then believe in the one? Yeah, I think so. You know, seeing my parents to this day, um, they still love each other. They still fight. And I love that about them. They keep each other honest that way. Um, but they truly deeply love each other. Um, I just, yeah, don't, don't think everybody finds it. Unfortunately, I, I wish everybody could. I'm very grateful to have met Leslie and the stars aligned. Cause again, it was just one event that could have happened in my life before me even coming to the U S you know, um, and I wouldn't even have physically <clears throat> been here and then, you know, you not messaging me. So there's so many different variables and events that, can just one event that that can take place. So that's why I think with people finding love, it's like get out of your comfort zone, go out, take that hike, go take that trip away. If you, you know, but finding that happiness in a happiness, I think is really key. I think we were both there and it was just, yeah, it was easy. So I do. I think that he, Alex mentioned something really important. I think is that a lot of people really take, you know, love the person they're with, but they don't appreciate, or maybe they take for granted the fact that they found somebody that's perfect for them. Because Mm -hmm. as you said, I think a lot of people, if not, I'd hate to say this, but most Most. people, like maybe a good most people, (laughs) don't ever find that perfect match. And I think that it's easy to say, you know, give it like, oh, you, you know, you'll go out, you'll eventually find that person who's perfect for you. Just give it time, you know, go on dates you can do everything right. And eventually you just won't find that right person. And I think it's really important to sort of, you know, take inventory every once in a while and be like, I am extremely lucky 
for being mm-hmm. in that minority of someone who actually found mm-hmm. someone who's perfect for me. And you can't forget about that. Even if every day you tell the person you're with, I love you, I love you, I love you, and mm-hmm. you appreciate them, I think you should appreciate the luck that, yeah. that you had. The I luck, think, that's a good, that's I, a great word. I think when I was younger and I saw family friends who you know hadn't got married, I didn't understand it. But as I got older, there's something beautiful in solitude as well. Relationships aren't for everyone. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think relationships are about compromise because we're not perfect, you know, sure. so you have you have to compromise. And yeah, oh, that was the perfect segue for me, Alex, because I was about to like I that was a, a rare moment of sweetness from you, Andy. That was very cute. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm a sweet guy. You sometimes. <laughs> but. I think there's a bit of a dichotomy there where it's like, okay, the luck of finding your perfect person. But I also think that, and if we do get back to the apps, then it's obvious. But in general, a lot of people don't really think about exactly what they need versus unnecessary wants and aren't really able to take stock of the ways in which someone could be perfect for them if they removed their ego Mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever number of things that don't serve them. So I guess my next question is based on that is... Were either of you looking for specific traits? What are those? And then do did what you find in the other person differ from what you thought maybe you were looking for? Oh, good question. Um, I think for me, I, I've i been very lucky to, to grown up for the past 33 years and watch my parents love. And it is just so kind and respectful. And I definitely wasn't willing to have anything but that. I know I, I know I wanted that kind of love. Um, I mean, they still hold hands, you know, this many years later and just have that deep respect for one another. My dad wakes up and literally that I've heard him on, on countless occasions say, what can I do for you today to, to make your day better to my mom? Um, oh. And it's, it's really sweet. And He's just so selfless. Um, and so, so are you, I mean, Alex is the same way. Um, and I could tell that a little bit, you know, just from one meeting with him, not to mention, I, like I said, I mean, I watched him even before I crossed the threshold and knew he was attractive. Um, and that Australian accent doesn't hurt. (laughs) 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 Um, but I have, I think I really do think dating various people is so important to figure out what you like in a person and what you want in a, in a forever. And so I have, I've done that, um, different nationalities, different personalities and, um, knew I want, I needed like some wit and some comedy to keep Mm -hmm. things lively all the time. He makes me laugh all the time. Um, and have just been really lucky that he works you know, in the same industry as yeah. me too, in media. Yeah. So I just feel like I hit the jackpot in so many different areas. Um, and maybe that's just one of the reasons why it felt so effortless. Hmm. Um, yeah, I think that my best, my favorite traits in, in you have been just the adventure and the, the up for anything. And yes, like, let's do this. Then like last, these last minute trips and hikes and <laughs> hardly any sort of research and like, Oh, bugger it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's just go and hit it and um, see what happens. I love that spirit of the moment sort of uh, attitude. It's really, really beautiful. The love is, is mutual and it's yeah, very, very easy. It is. And I think another thing is just, I've always been, I've always been an optimist, just positive person for the most part, but uh, you have too. I think I love the way he wakes up every day and he's just happy. Like he's just enthusiastic about the day, no matter what it is. And I think that's so beautiful because even if I'm in a bad mood that day, he, you're just not, <laughs> you're just, I don't know if you ever really have. I try and be positive, you know, it's day. like, yeah, yeah. I think it's good to be positive. And, yeah. Just yeah. a, ha- you're just an overall happy person. And I, yeah. I just love that. Yeah. Life's, life's too short to be unhappy. It's like, why be miserable? Just be oh, happy. so true. This is a very, I think, Australian perspective. This is uh, yeah. this Australian thing. Mm. So are you guys all happy? I, I think we're just pretty, like, when I, we're la- very laid back, we go with the flow, but we're extremely hard workers as well. So we try and find that balance. And, yeah, we do like a drink and we, we take the piss a lot out of each other. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we just, we're, we're easy. We're an easygoing nation down there. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, speaking of taking the piss and and uh, <laughs> and and just the slight, there is certainly, I'm sure, slight cultural differences. Correct. Hundred percent. You're our first couple where I really feel like I really want to ask that. Mm-hmm. Um, what What do you have to say about that? <laughs> Um, do you think it helps? It. Was it something you had to overcome? I think we're very similar with work ethic and culture. We just have a different accent. You know, we, we don't really like the British too much. <laughs> <laughs> there, are some, there are quite a few vocab words that still throw me for a loop. Yeah. Um, the accent you, you, is... You guys we, had a great we, video about that. <laughs> really yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. That's, not just, even, that's not even half of them. We abbreviate I mean, we everything. were having... It was, we were over at my sister's house with my nephews this morning and it, it was pouring down rain and they're in their uh, rain boots. And what did, what do you call them? We call them gum boots. They were, my, my, <laughs> my nephews just kind of like stared and Perks. looked and walked off. They were like, they're, what do you, they're uh, nice gum boots, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You guys love to tack like an O at the end of the words and, yeah, yeah. and make. I think and then, the biggest thing, yeah, is the, the word differences. I'll say yeah. things like Avo. People are like, what? Like, um, that's short for afternoon. What are you up to the Savo? They abbreviate oh. everything. Yeah, so we say that. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's Afternoon's lots. just not that much work to say. <laughs> or brekkie. It Breakfast is, bre- is brekkie, which I, I kind of like. Brekkie, I like that one. Yeah. Brekkie's cute. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so I just, I don't want to, I just want to get this question in. Yeah. So it's very important. What's it like to go from living your whole life in Australia to being in Little Rock, Arkansas? <laughs> Well, Great you question. Bypass. I want to get there. Okay. Where are we going to get there? But he was first in LA, so he was like first. Okay. If you want to tell the whole life story, I was just okay. Okay. I was sure. To the chase. Straight from I Australia. Cut to the chase. Yeah. What, what's I mean, that like? from from Sydney compared to LA, everything is just on steroids, and that's the US in a general like. The U.S. is bigger and better and at everything, and I, I do love that about the country. Um, but now to Little Rock, it's. I've been here before, obviously, and it's just like, like it's <laughs> like but people are no. so lovely. Like we, we haven't even moved into our house and like yeah. the neighbor's mother came over with the, her grandchild and introduced and then the postal lady just walked into our house and she's like, I'm Monica, I'm I'm the USPS lady and I'll be delivering your mail. Oh, my God, that would <laughs> never happen. <laughs> and she was just like, so boom. sweet and so beautiful, so Everyone here is just, they're so nice. They're so lovely here. And do they, do they, are you like a commodity? Are you like an, a yeah, you must be like a celebrity in, in Little Rock? I mean, like Leslie just got a message. Someone um, saw her at Trader Joe's and sent her a DM, like, oh my God, I just saw you at Trader Joe's. <laughs> So yeah, she, but I'm she sure she gets, gets that anyway. Oh, no, but, but she has, about- she's seated. I'm saying just because you're an Australian yeah. in Little Rock, do you, oh. are you like somewhat of a celebrity yourself? I think people keep, uh, they they keep talking to him just to keep hearing his accent. <laughs> I probably, yeah. I'm sure I dress different. Like I wear these long T-shirts down like, Everyone here sort of wears collared shirts and all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to have to get some collared shirts and a vest. I'm like, okay, no, fight it. You fight want. it. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, yeah. But I think you're being very sweet and nice. And I yeah. was shocked that he very willingly and lovingly agreed to this plan. Um, I think at the end love. of the day, we need to be, we're about to raise a child and to be close to family during that time is outweighs any location anywhere just being close to family is really important so. yeah and uh you know how often we travel so i f- i feel like that'll you know allow us to get out and see things and to be honest i think back on our time in la when we were actually in la i didn't i hardly left our house because really when we're there we're constantly you know writing and editing about what we just did and planning for the next trip um yeah. So you'd be I, in your office for like 12 hours. I literally wouldn't leave the office. And so I think this is just, I, I'm really excited for this plan. Um, we just, have so much space too. The house is massive. If you guys want to come and visit, we <laughs> you have, have your own bed- bedroom. You have two bedrooms. You can bring Don't guests. Don't tempt us. <laughs> We've been in <laughs> The cost One of living bedroom. is pretty great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for rubbing it in, you guys. We'll, 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 we'll talk. We'll talk after the, after yeah. the podcast. Um, okay. Let's get back to your dynamic. I want to ask, what was an early hurdle in your relationship and 
how did you overcome it? An early hurdle. Um, and if there isn't question. one, we can just pass and go to the next well, one. Well, I think Leslie traveling a lot when we first met, she's like, oh, I'm off for three weeks to do mm-hmm. yoga training. And then you're like, oh, I'm going to going to Norway. And then I kind of invited myself to Norway. I'm like, oh, I've never been to Norway. And she's like, oh, you should come. And I'm like, okay. As a oh. joke, as a joke. I. <laughs> and then uh, next thing I know, this guy has a, has a plane ticket and it's our like ninth date to Norway. But I think that's a, it's a great answer because it has been the downfall of some of my past relationships. Uh, Traveling just, together? No, oh, just yeah. me traveling without the other person and being gone so often and not being able to really cultivate that relationship properly. Um, And it, I think has uh, been made to look like um, a a selfishness to a lot of other partners. Um, Whereas for me, it's, it's work. So I, I'm very thankful that she's, she's, you've gone on trips without me. You went to Mexico Mm -hmm. and, but I mean, like, for the most part, I'm just, I'm just happy that you can come along on yeah. a lot of them it's because defi- I think it definitely aids in our relationship. It's definitely been a, a bit of a sacrificial lamb for me. I go on these trips with Leslie and then I miss out on like multiple car commercial shoots and I'm like, ah, oh, that would have been a good one. <laughs> but I, I put my guys on it and so they're stoked to work on it. So that's just life. I know when I say yes to these trips, which are amazing too, we're like going to Europe and we're in Switzerland and, yeah, so they're phenomenal. So uh, yeah, I think I think trying to balance the time will forever be hard with my business and your business. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's always a hurdle. But We've kind of morphed into one now. Yeah, so. a little bit. But I mean, um, you know, like production's coming back in LA. It is finally after this. As we, we're definitely not out of the pandemic, but we're trying to crawl our way out of the pandemic. And Hollywood's coming back, and so Alex actually leaves for the next three weeks to go on a shoot, which um, yeah. works out because I am pregnant and when I'm going to get our house in order and I've got all the things to keep me busy. So it's good. Yeah. that brings me to my next question then, uh, because we, Andy and I joke about this a lot because in non pandemic times, I'm an opera singer and I'll leave for, you know, a contract and be gone for three to six weeks at a time. And we joke that it's like great for a marriage. You know, there's something about having that chasm between you. A little bit of distance can help the heart grow stronger in some ways, or it just makes the time together a little more special. Do you find that works for the two of you? Because you do both travel so much or typically would travel a lot. And Alex is leaving for three weeks. Does that help? Or is that just something you feel you have to overcome? Well, it's so interesting because I feel like until last month, we have spent so much time together since we met. We hadn't been apart for like more than two days or three days or yeah. something. Yeah, I mean, really, in the last two years, the most time we've spent away from each other is Mexico trip. You did is like yeah, three, four, five nights max. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so then, wow. yeah, I know. <laughs> Considering all was, the travel that's <laughs> happening, that's very impressive. It's super impressive. <laughs> it yeah. is. It's been a lot of togetherness like right off the bat where we had to learn about each other's quirks how each other travels um which was a a learning curve but so fun at the same time yeah and then cut to last month where alex went on a a shoot in san francisco for three weeks and it was really shit i didn't like it at all (laughs) but i think you're so right in the fact that absence absolutely makes a great heart grow fonder Um, yeah it made me realize when you're away and you're sort of like, oh, you're just looking at that empty side of the bed and you just kind of, <laughs> you miss that. And then when you are back together, it's, I think you do hug a little tighter and appreciate that, that mm-hmm. person you love. Yeah, yeah. it's a little bittersweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I always say that if every, if every man was, or woman was married to an opera singer, <laughs> the divorce rate would go down like 90%. <laughs> <laughs> or wait, tell drone, me or tell a drone us more about that. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Charlene, wait. how often how often will you go around the house and just sing? It's funny you say that. I've just become mute. I yeah, don't it's, in- it's actually pretty sad. I it I don't is it? I, I find it sad. It was, I'm, I was so used to the first, you know, six plus years of our relationship, it's just like constant singing in the house. Yeah, because even when I wasn't preparing for something you know maybe there was an audition or there was i needed to keep my voice in shape but it's sort of strange you know i 
I think it's kind of refreshing because now when I sing, it's because I really, I really feel like singing Bach. Like I want to listen to some Bach and I go down a rabbit hole, but it's not, there's no sense of it being attached to obligation or work or singing. Mm. Anything can, as you guys certainly know, I'm sure a lot of people would look at what you two do and assume it's just fun all the time, but I am sure that it feels like work sometimes. Absolutely. And singing is no different. And it's been kind of liberating, especially as a creative type who has always hustled for my career. I've spent my entire adult life hustling to suddenly have that all come to a screeching halt and just sort of sing once in a blue moon because you feel like it Uh. is, it's a change, you know, that I don't mind. I mean, you've been doing it since you were 19. Uh, yeah, I've been I mean, singing. It's understandable. Yeah. I mean, for me, selfishly, it, it's sad. Well, he says that, but then when I sing high, he's he has to go upstairs. No, it's only when I'm walking right <laughs> past you and you just like hit me with like that like militarized just like oh, high no, just for fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's usually good. Take, take that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> speaking of, what'd you say? <laughs> speaking of fun, creative work that can feel like work after a while. Um, you guys do work together and it would seem increasingly so, correct? Correct. Yeah, I was just editing a yoga video downstairs for about two hours and I probably have another hour to go on it. He's, he's so great. Platform. He's just the best. Wow. <laughs> so, I really yeah. want some of that to rub uh, off. <laughs> now I see why you're together. <laughs> so. uh, you guys will yeah, get a kick out of this. We Because you do go on all these trips and everything. We had a sponsored vacation oh, last year for the first time. Not good. <laughs> and I, you know, I brought my Sony A7, A7 III. And, you you know, my fancy lens. Yeah, I knew you'd appreciate that. And packed my tripod, which I know it's not a big deal for you. But for me, that's like, you know, packing a full size tripod is kind of a big deal. And it was it was just so funny how every day, everywhere we went, I would have to like do all the settings and I'd be like, stand here, like tell him where to plant his feet. I'd have to take a few photos for us to like frame it. And then I would go and insert myself in it. I I was basically a tripod. I was a human (laughs) tripod. That was it. Isn't if it, I wasn't put in the right place, it wasn't getting done right. It definitely makes, you know, the thrill of travel seem a little bit like work. But at the same time, it's fun work. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's fun work. And so I'm grateful to be able to do it. But how odd does it feel? Like how, um, I don't know, uh, just like nar- almost narcissistic does it feel to have you setting up this tripod and then you jumping yes. in front of it all the time. That always in the beginning of, of, you know, starting my travel blog and everything, I always had so much, it was just a hard, ba- a hard thing for me to overcome. Cause I was mm. like, this is it's a little bit disgusting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that's, that, that's a good thing to think for yes. your character. Yeah. If you didn't think that there might be an issue. And right. it also is reflected also in your output because there are people who do what you do room like it would be cringy but it's never with you it's always in mm. such perfect taste it's always I, artistic and beautiful i Thank think you. um when i met les and i'm like okay cool like and then all these like campaigns she's like i need to do this thing for so and so and then there was like one for amazon the ring product i'm like cool i'm gonna dress up as the amazon guy <laughs> delivering the package and <laughs> so like we've gone from like taking photos and here's the product just where you see it and you just like, really, we're still doing that in 2020. These, these really basic yeah. photos with the product I've tra- as a creative director and Leslie's a creative as well. We're like, Oh, let's do some video. We have all this equipment and drones. So we come up with this little storyboard. I'm like, all right, the package is going to get delivered. We're going to shoot the first half in LA. We're going to be on the Swiss Alps. The Matterhorn's going to be behind us. We'll pull out the phone. Oh my God. Wow. And their so, sponsors you know, must be so sad. <laughs> If I were a company, I would absolutely want yeah. to accept it. Like most, it's just like, <laughs> so like, like you know, bad that, one, lighting. that one was like a package getting delivered and it was for the ring button. And then like Leslie is on the Swiss Alps, pulls out the phone, the Matterhorns. I'm like freezing, like holding the camera. <laughs> like, I don't know where, I, I don't know how I found him. I am so lucky. Wow. But it, it's, it's fun. It's fun. I'm like, I'm, I'm effing freezing here. I'm like, let's go. Hurry up. So it's, it's not all glamorous, but it's, it's fun. We have fun. Yeah, we do. You really wow. take the whole Instagram husband thing to a new level. I would he say. He does. He it's, really, really does. We've done some cool stuff. So. Yeah. Wait, yeah. yeah. So You're Sims, making you... me look really bad, Alex. I think it should tone it down. Just take the temperature sure down a little bit. I'm sure they're used to hearing this. Uh, so since you do work together, is that ever 
hard? Does it ever make it complicated? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I wish. <laughs> I wish sometimes we could just film the behind the scenes of the behind the scenes because it's just <laughs> it can turn into just a lot of dumb bickering. There's one the other day and we're just like in the back streets here of Little Rock. <laughs> With this tripod and we like, listen, there's no idea what we're doing. We've like already shot this product. We don't have any other products because like everything's in a moving truck and I'm swearing and I'm like, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like pretty. So it's, it's not all daisies and rainbows. We no. have our moments and I'm just like, <laughs> this hasn't been thought out. There's no storyboard. There's no creative. So. We're in the middle of the move. It's a little hard there. And not everything can be as fun as shooting on the Swiss Alps. Like that's just yeah. the reality of yeah. it. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, there's definitely some, uh, some rocky moments where we have some heated exchanges For and sure. <laughs> level ourselves. But yeah. For sure. It's... But we're never like, I love that it never escalates to like just ugliness with us yeah. and that that's what i'm really thankful for it never gets ugly yeah so, so speaking yeah. of which andy this is andy's traditional yeah. love fest question andy do you want to ask them oh yes um how do you guys fight when you do fight just like just annoying bickering yeah just like just well, we're really you short with each other well <laughs> You had no way. You weren't listening. Like, listen more. Right. Like, <laughs> are, you, are you serious right now? <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just stupid until one of us just, I think. It's usually and, when Leslie has these deadlines and then she, we shoot it on the same day. We've got to edit it and deliver it. And then like. Pressure. Yeah, it's the pressure. Pressure cooker. Yeah. So. Sorry about she that. She loves that. <laughs> I do really well under pressure. And he's like, are you kidding me? You're I, just now telling me? I do that? as well. But I like crumble at the start. I'm like, <laughs> I flossed his mess with cameras and microphones and lights and stuff. And then so. you get, you hit your stride. Yeah. Yeah. You will yeah. get there eventually. Yeah. Because we have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I have one more question and then we're going to move on to the game. So now that you found each other, <laughs> what would you say your single friends who are looking are doing wrong? If if they want to be in a relationship, yeah, I, I said I want we're to looking. Caveat all of this stuff, right? Exactly. Yeah. With like, it's not if you're if they're single, not sure wrong happy. to be yeah. alone. Just, sure. Okay. Go I ahead. think um, I, I'm thinking of a few select friends right now, and they're extremely picky. They're just yes. the, gosh, they have this laundry list of things that uh, have to reside in a person, and that has I don't know that's just never been me. I. I take somebody with how they come and, um, and you know, life is about, <laughs> I don't know, um, picking your battles and picking yeah. your battles. Thank you. And yeah. I think I just look at some, some friends and I, I worry that they'll never get there because there's nobody's perfect. Yeah. Well, yes. you always say, Charlene, you say, uh, needs over wants. Yeah. Right? I always talk That's about this need, like actually Sit with, your, with yourself and think about what you need in a partner versus what you mm. want. And not yeah. everyone's going to come perfectly packaged the way, you know, a fairy tale once told you or whatever, mm. or how if your parents mm -hmm. tell you. But I feel like people, like you said, Leslie, have this laundry list of what someone should do for a living how tall they are, how much hair yeah. they have, how they dress. And, and then it's the like problem, none of those are needs. The, the uh, problem is, no. is that's... That's weaponized by the internet, by, by, mm. by uh, dating mm. sites, because you basically just look at a resume and you fall in love with the resume and then you go with that instead of actually going out and doing the work of meeting someone yes. and being like, oh, yes. yeah, they don't have these things. Yeah. Yep. Maybe yeah. maybe The Bachelor show can do a new one, compromises <laughs> for, for everyday dating that's people. A, <laughs> You're going to be the producer. Yes. <laughs> that's, a, that, that's, a, that's a hot, hot idea for, yeah. for ABC. I think, yeah, I think I'm, there's a market for that. I really think relationships are about compromise because no one's perfect and yeah, everyone's like, i got to have this in a person, exactly what you said. And a friend of mine just got out of a, an unhealthy relationship and he was just an absolute hot mess himself. And he had this incredible 2020 sort of come to Jesus moment and evolution ended up writing this very open, um, what do they call those blog posts where you can open letter, open uh, letter. I don't know, but yeah, there's that website where you can write your own blogs mm -hmm, and everyone medium. and mm -hmm. medium. Yeah. And it was just really beautiful. And I feel like he's now ready. Like, I think he's just so free and found his inner peace that he's going to find someone really, really soon now. But 18 months, two years, the last two years, he's just been kind of all over the map. But yeah. yeah, I think it kind of goes back to what how we met. And um, 
you know, we were, we had both just gotten out of relationships and we're kind of in this, you know, really sad, depressive state that you have to work through and you have to heal from. Mm. And um, like him, sometimes you have to hit like yeah. this rock bottom to truly find inner peace and work on yourself to yeah. to get there. I had a rocky moment running in the Encino Mountains where I just kept running and then I just... Yeah, I was like, yeah, I just sort of had this moment. I think everyone has that moment where they get out of that rut after and then you just sort of find your stride. So, yeah, I think everyone will get there. But it takes it takes work. I mean, yes. it takes work on yourself and work in a relationship. I don't think anything good comes easy. My mates, they just need to get outside of their comfort zone. A lot of them are just sort of in their the bubbles and they just, I don't know, they're just in cruise control. You know, mm-hmm. you got to like turn cruise control off and just get out of it. That's a no. great one for guys. Absolutely. The, what, what do you think your single friends are doing wrong? That's a great one. Because I agree. They're, I think a lot of men are kind of like, they sort of just run the same track. Oh, yeah. They don't change at all. Yes. More so than, than, mm-hmm. than, than women. women yeah. Think. That was a good one. You guys. Mm-hmm. So good. Okay, you guys give great answers. <laughs> hey, so um, are you ready for our fun game? We're ready. Okay. <laughs> now it's time for the Dear Shandy Newlyweds game. Uh, this is just a bit of friendly competition. Typically, couples are pit against each other in this game, but we are pitting you against one another to see who knows the other better. <laughs> okay, so question number one. We'll start, Alex, with you. Mm-hmm. Alex, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? And you can show the camera. Okay. The beautiful handwriting. Oh, that was a good one. He would travel back in time. <laughs> really. <laughs> I like the way that C sort of was a G, but it just turned into a C. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bad. It's bad. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's actually pretty... Cute. Yeah, I don't know. That's the word I would think. That it's is a good one. Writing. I feel like you would. But it's very legible. You would flirt with that. I'm, I'm in that. I'm pretty close to you. I have very similar yeah. handwriting. Yeah. yeah. We just don't write too much, too much these days. So. No. <laughs> As a, a drunk pilot, start. you sure don't. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Leslie, what did you say Alex would say to that? What superpower would he pick? Um, I thought he would pick flying just because he makes other objects fly basically every day that he would want to then fly as well. Okay. Does that make sense, right? Yeah. I think that's a reasonable that answer, but that's I'm, a reasonable just trying answer. To, I'm just trying to justify it. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> I have no idea. I think that's a really good answer, but you did not get that point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so Leslie, show the camera your answer. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Ah, uh, yes, teleportation. <laughs> Alex, what did you think Leslie would pick as her superpower? I thought she would pick flying. Oh! oh. Wait, let's oh, see that we, again. Come on, let, let, me see, let me see that card. Fly. Oh, fly. I wanna, oh, that, that's good stuff. That's interesting that you both said that about each other, but it's not right. actually what either but of you yeah. said. Yeah. yeah. She loves I'm to fly. I'm tempted to give half points for that. I do love that. to fly. I get that justification. Yeah. Too. Yeah. 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 Huh. Okay, yeah. well... The bad news is no points, but good so news we both suck. tied. <laughs> yeah. If you both get nothing right, that's also good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everything's in balance. Everything's right. in yeah. balance. Okay. Question number two. Alex, what is your biggest pet peeve? Forgetfulness. Nice. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a respectable one. That's good. Yeah. I like that. Right. Leslie, right. what did you think Alex would say to that? What did you think his biggest pet peeve would be? Not that. I said really <laughs> bad food. <laughs> I relate it's, to that. He always, he's like I said, he's a food snob and he's such a good chef that mm. when he just doesn't get it, it's not, it's yeah, not good. It's yeah, not I good. mean, it's just, it's it's unacceptable. Like when, <laughs> if I go out and you're paying and it's just like, and I can cook something better. Like I made yeah. pasta the other night and her parents were like, wow, this is amazing. This is like restaurant. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I relate like, to that I was, so hard. Yeah, I agree. I I'll have res- like remorse. I think my response is, I'm like, yeah, I've had worse at restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's very proud of his abilities. So, okay, I got it wrong, but yeah. that's just, okay. Justified yeah. still. It is well just justified. for kicks. Show us the card. Okay, <laughs> Leslie. Bad food. Okay. Nice. I mean, no, po- no point, but that's okay. There, Again, there wow. were great shut justifications. Out. Double shutout. Sorry. 
No, yeah. they're shutting each other out. I know. Interesting. I know. Okay, Leslie, yeah. what is your biggest pet peeve? Smacking. Gum? Anything. Anything. You smacking. Smack, like, smack? No, I meant like eating while smacking, like oh. chewing with your oh, mouth like, open. Oh, sounds oh, from your mouth that oh. are... Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've never heard that smacking before. Really? It's called cool. chewing. Is it a southern thing? Yeah. It's a, I, I think smacking <laughs> is a southern thing. You relate uh, to that. You. Oh, I totally. I, I've actually been with people where it's almost driven me up a wall. Like oh, I've, I, I've, I've, I felt heat coming, like a heat coming up. I was so It's upset. everything I can do not to ask them to stop, which would be <laughs> no. very rude, but like, ha. Oh, I get these mango exam. chewy things and it just, it's the best. Seeing her reaction. Oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> it's the worst. It's the worst. So, so yeah. Alex, what did yeah. you think Leslie would say her biggest her biggest pet peeve is? Um, this one. Leaving things to the last minute. Huh. That's yeah. these are all so reasonable. They're all good. But you guys ones. are just, just two ships the in the right night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, we are. Yeah, they're yeah. great I answers mean, for someone that, else. That makes sense. That I guess sometimes that's my pet peeve, but like I also do that a lot yeah. myself. Yeah. Is leave things. I'm a procrastinator at heart. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Am too. Yeah. Okay. So we're still tied. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> zero, zero, are, zero. You're, you're okay. pitching a perfect game. <laughs> okay. Alex, what do you think your relationship would most benefit from? Separate beds, separate bathrooms, or a separate TV? This was the easiest one yet. Yeah, this is an sure. easy one. Separate bathrooms. Yeah, that's, that's, 100, that's, that's 100%. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Yay. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well done. Leslie, what, what did you say to this? Um, for my answer, I said it was hard because I, I, I said TV. Yeah. I just said the same. Just ditto. Really? Yeah. 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 We'd, both be- we'd both benefit from that. Leslie's like, we'll take a bath for one to two hours. I don't know that I'd benefit from it because I just kind of do what I want and take take the baths regardless yeah. <laughs> because you're so sweet and yeah, you let me. Yeah, but I think we'd benefit some more if you had any. But I said yeah. TV because I feel like while we do like to watch a lot of the same stuff, you like those weird like – action-packed Netflix-y series. And yeah. I'm like, uh, can we can we watch anything else? Yeah, action. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately, Alex, uh, Alex, you did not get that point. Well. <laughs> no. No. But always well justified by you two. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so Leslie's in the lead now. One nothing. Wow. Question number four. <laughs> Alex, if you could have Leslie's blank, what would it be? Okay, here we go. Compassion. Mm. That's a beautiful one. Mm. That's very nice. She she likes it, but that's like a that's a patronizing awe, but she knows it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was this one was hard. It was it was hard. This, this was yeah. very very hard. Leslie, let's see this your is the hardest answer. one. What did you Bert, think Alex would say about you? I said this was hard, and I think it's wrong. Well, I know it's wrong. I said spontaneity, but like you have that a lot of the time anyway. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I said the same thing where it's yeah. Yeah. So I, I had to answer something and I definitely spelled, Bill, how do you spell spontaneity? That's a hard one. It's hard. It's there's hard. an E in there that you're not expecting. I, I know. And just, what about an I? Do we think there's an I in there? Screw I'm not sure. There is, but it eye. always catches you off guard. I, I know exactly what <laughs> yeah, you're talking yeah, yeah. about. It's not a word. It's not a word you write fast. No, so, okay. Yeah. Leslie, sadly, you missed out on that point. Let's see if Alice can bring this back to a tie. Mm-hmm. Leslie, mm-hmm. if you could have Alex's blank, what would it be? <sighs> Oh, his cooking abilities. Mm. That's a good one. Chef skills. Yeah. What Alex, <laughs> what did you think she would take? Um, I just said compassion. I said the same thing because, I don't know, it was so difficult. It was a hard one. <laughs> yeah. Y'all, these are really, we suck the at this game. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, you're, so you're both so compassionate that not only are you both compassionate to begin with, but you even desire the compassionate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, that's I, think, nice. I thought, yeah, yeah. I These like are it. this is a very endearing game, and yeah. I think it's made even more endearing by the fact that you're not getting any points. Well, they su- they suck at the game, and they suck at playing the game itself. It's yeah, a double because suck. they're yeah. so like good together. That yeah, like, you're too good. You guys are too good. You're yeah. ruining. Them. Y'all, yeah. I don't know. When you told us there was going to be a newlywed game, I was like, oh, for sure, we're going to suck that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Question number five. Okay. Alex. 
Okay. You're on death row. What's your last meal? Okay, you guys probably aren't going to read this, but it's chicken snitty, chicken uh. chicken schnitzel. Oh. It's my mama's my mama's recipe. It's like German style chicken. It's great. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Snitty. That's interesting that you would That's get a, rid of the C and the H. Why? Yeah. Why isn't it schnitty? It's uh well, it's chicken schnitzel, but in a show we say chicken snitty. Oh, you know, you say schnitzel. They, they abbreviate just everything. abbreviate it again. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's just my mom's one. That's that's is, I like that. This that's is good. turning into a very interesting question. Yeah. Um. Well, okay. I'm very wrong. First of all, I did a I did a, an array of a menu. I did uh, <laughs> <That's not work. laughs> lasagna, your mom's cake, lasagna. avocado toast. And Wait a, a second! Oh, no, Flat that's allowed, white. but not. Unfortunately, the chicken schnitzel isn't there. I'm so bummed. The problem I, the problem is is you actually dug yourself a deeper hole. Was you just basically threw like five answers out and none of them are right. <laughs> I was just, I know, I was like, hopefully yeah. one of these will work. We just had it the other night, too. I'm a man of, you know. Well, just wait until you hear my answer. Okay. All right, Leslie, you're on death death row. What is your last meal? This chicken fingers. Chicken fingers. Yeah, okay. exactly what he said. Oh, my gosh. Um. Well, and again. She calls them chicken fingers that I make. It's chicken schnitzel. Well, he calls it something different. He's so fancy. Like, he'll, he'll, he calls it chicken sh schnitzel. It really, it's fancy for chicken fingers. Well, the Germans started it. Chicken fingers. <laughs> we got chicken fingers, macaroni and cheese, diet, diet Coke, Cabernet uh, Sauvignon, and a chocolate cake. Okay. Excellent. Wow. Excellent. Okay, so that's a, a girl that's, after my own heart. I would totally do courses. Do you want to hear what I wrote for yeah, our Yes, yes. Let's get it. Um, biscuits and gravy. <laughs> <laughs> She's a southern girl, biscuits and gravy. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That would be your last meal. Is that just a shot in the dark? I love I love a good carb. I was trying to be funny too. <laughs> you guys are so endearing. <laughs> I love yeah. a good carb. Well, Alex, you are our first ever zero out of five. Yes. <laughs> Congrats. Yeah, and the winner right. of this newlyweds game is Leslie with one, one. point. <laughs> yeah. Y'all, we both we oh. wanted, but we did, we would, our last meals would be the same. Yeah. That's, that, yeah, that's what's that's interesting beautiful. is like you guys yeah. thought the other would say flying. You, you, there was yeah. definitely a synergy. It's synergies. Yeah. But this yeah. is part of their relationship. The relationship's all about adventure. Yes. They don't even know what's going on with each other. It's all <laughs> mystery and adventure. That's the way we like it. We like to keep it a mystery, Andy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you guys were so much fun. Thank you. Oh, that was just delightful. So easy to talk to. You guys are adorable together. Oh, thank you thank for you coming guys. on and doing this with us. Yeah, that was course. really fun. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we'll work on a uh, we'll work on that newlywed game and get back to you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe oh. we'll have you back on for a redemption. <laughs> we'll yeah. You guys, you guys don't <laughs> want to go on Family Feud with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, no. don't know if we'd be on our show. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a pass. <laughs> I, knew we'd, I knew we'd be horrible, and we were. That's okay. Even that's cute, the fact it that is. you knew that. It's unique. You, you have a unique bond. Yeah, you do. It's, uh, I really, yeah. I kind of relate to what they have with yeah, each other. It's good. It's very beautiful. You don't beautiful. need to know everything about each other. And we both love chicken fingers. That's, yeah, that's, that's, all that's it. it. That's it. You know that. You love, you love to have your bathroom time and you love chicken fingers. <laughs> Preferably at the same time. Um, Andy, yes. Andy, you, that's a great idea. That is a great idea. And you know what? It's Trying definitely happened before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us for this episode of Love Fest. And we hope to one day, maybe in Little Rock, Arkansas, yeah. Yeah. have some yeah. chicken fingers with you. <laughs> you, guys you, bring, your room. you guys bring the maple syrup. We've got the chicken. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Bye. Right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. I so, knew that we were going to really enjoy them, but... Yeah, oh. So down to earth. Super down to earth. And you can tell they are... It's not like their wavelengths are like just close to each other. They are... It's like airtight. Oh, yeah. I related to couple. that kind of... They were almost so in each other's minds that it almost fucked them over. Oh, yeah. In the game. Totally. <laughs> like, it was... Like, I can relate. I think if we were to do that game, and maybe one day we will, I feel like... Like, I would overthink it. Well, or we're, fi we're five and four, right? Maybe they're five and four. Although they seem like nines to me, maybe. Oh, you think so? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> But great couple. Great couple. And uh, I hope one day his um, 
Instagram husbandry can maybe rub off on you a bit. Maybe. Maybe it will. <laughs> you sound very optimistic. Mm. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in to that delightful love episode. I'm like, what a delightful episode. But they were so cute. They were. They were really cute. They really were. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what you can do. You can subscribe, like, leave comments, leave iTunes reviews. It's probably other things you can do, but I can't think of anything at the moment. But wherever the you- notification bell. Yes. <laughs> Good Ding. Job. You're very proud of yourself. <laughs> so anything you can do to support our little podcast as we grow would be greatly appreciated. And I think that's it for this episode of Dear Shandy, Andy. Dear Shandy Andy? Yes. That's nice. Well, that's where the Andy and Shandy comes from. I know. It's (laughs) kind of an easy one. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Dear Shandy.